to this morning's study. It's the last one this week in the morning. And um, before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the time that we have together today. And we just pray for your spirit's presence, your guiding and correcting. We know, Lord, that there's many things that we do not understand and our minds are not capable yet of grasping. But we just pray that uh, you can enlighten us. And we pray, Lord, that we can always hold Christ before us, that we can see uh, the goal to which we are reaching where this light along the path is leading us to that eternal city to be forever with Christ and help us to act that way as we go throughout the day. Be with us now and with each person as we uh, open your word together. May your Holy Spirit teach us, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Well, good morning again, everyone. Now, we spent a lot of time trying to take this section of the book of Judges and uh, connect it to um, uh, to our lines. And what we did over the last couple of days was looking at um, uh, the names of the tribes that are mentioned uh, in this section in Judges from chapter 14 to 18. And when we did that, um, we noticed a lot of uh, symbolic numbers that, that we're using to help us place the time of the end for this ver these groups of verses. And we're saying that this is a repetition of history that is judges chapter five is a repetition of history in our time now the the history that it's repeating is um when we look at deborah and brack deborah and brack is going to go from september 23rd uh to november 9th right that's the first to the third and that's going to be addressing uh the issues with Parminder, who's his message, which is symbolized by Sisera. And so in the Song of Deborah and Barak, we have two different sections. We have the first section, um, verses uh, five or one to 13 in chapter five, right? And, and this is going to address, um, I guess it would basically be the prophetic message or the prophetic lines uh, from November 9th to December 25th, that's 777 days, plus the 365 plus 18 days, which is 383 days to January 11th, 2023. So it's about understanding this prophetic message as it relates to this movement. And, and then we're saying that verse 14 to, to 31 is a repetition of this history. So that is the fourth angel's message. So that's that's the the premise that we've used as we've we've gone through looking at the song of Deborah and Barak. So this section judges fourteen to five, verse fourteen to thirty-one. Um, what we've been trying to do is see is this a line and um, the thing that we found significant is in this story, it's going to go uh, to to all these different tribes. And it's going to give us symbols that we can place at December 25th, 2021. At least that's where we're placing them. Now, maybe we could place them somewhere else. I don't But that's where we've placed them. So whether this is correct or not, we don't know. But that's seems to be uh, one of the things that that is shown. Now, one of the specific pieces that gives us that is this place called Ta'anach. Now, it's mentioned seven times in the Bible. Now, the first three times it's mentioned is in the book of Joshua. Uh, we can see Joshua 12, 21. 12 times 21 is 252. 
It's also in Joshua 17, 11. 17 times 11 is 187. It's also seen in Joshua 21, 25. 21 times 25 is 525. So we have the 252, the 187, and the 525 all mentioned. Now, um, now we know 252 plus 525 is 777, and we know that from November 9th to uh, July 18th is 252 days, and from July 18th to December 25th, 21, 2021 is 525 days. So this is representing that 777 period, which is going to end on December 25th, 2021. Now, we know that we can take the numbers of Joshua 21, 25, and it can represent, because 21 can represent 12, so it could be 12, 25, 21. And, and then we also have Judges 1, verse 27, the first time it's mentioned in Judges, which is a reverse of July 21st, so a symbol for midnight. So, so we could have looked at this and say that all of this is representing a period of darkness. That period of darkness is represented from chapter 5, verse 14 to 18, and it's going to end on December 25th, 2021. Anybody have problems with that or questions? It sounds, it sounds good. It sounds like it works. Okay. And and because we can see that the symbols that are represented by these tribes that are not in unity, the only ones are Zebulun and Naphtali that join uh, with Barak and Deborah to fight this battle against Sisera. Right? So Zebulun and Naphtali are the ones who risk their lives with no reward, not seeking any reward, any spoil, right? So uh, we also consider them as messages as well. Right. But, right. So they are messages. Uh, we understand that there's people attached to it, but right. those are messages. Yeah. But the part of that message, we would say, yes, is that this attitude or spirit is represented by Zebulun and Naphtali. Right? So they're going to be the ones that uh, that are at this battle in Tanakh. So this battle is December 25th, 2021. That's where we're saying this battle is. So that's why we're marking that as the time of the end. This is, this is a message that arrives. Now we know that there, there is a conflict between messages. So we have on December 25th, 2021, Stephen notices from 457 BC to 321 AD that there's 777 years, something we should have noticed before, but we didn't, right? So he notices it on that day and, and we present it. Then also, um, Colin is going to present on that day and Colin is going to present his study on, um, on Trump. That is specifically, he's going to connect Daniel chapter 3, Daniel chapter 11, verses 1 to 4, and Revelation 17, together with uh, an application that says that Trump needs to become president again. Now, I recognize, because I'm at the study, I recognize that what Colin saw was very significant, that it should not be dismissed, that it needs to be accepted by the movement, except for his conclusion. And that's because we know some things that Colin doesn't know. That is, during that time, we had been examining the foundation and we had saw the mistakes that the Millerites had made. And since we're repeating Millerite history, we can learn from their mistakes. The types of errors that they were making related to the types of errors that we were making. But because of the conflict, the way that it it came out, um, we just ended up 
at odds with with Colin somehow, which didn't make sense to me because here I am, here Colin, you have something that's very precious. People are sort of fighting against it. I want to help you, but instead people stepped in and, and, and shut that down. So uh, part of that's my fault um, because of conflicts in the past on how I've dealt with people. So I understand it to some degree, but we are not acting in the proper way in, in, in the way that this issue has never been resolved. The problems that people have with me personally have interfered with the light that God has given this movement and the problems that we have with other people also hinders that. So we have to learn to set that aside. We have to recognize just because somebody may get under my skin or whatever it is, I need to find out what is true. I need to listen to what's being said and look for light, no matter where it comes from, no matter how uh, annoying or maybe even uh, humble the person is, the person that, you know, that's not even in conflict. We, we hardly ever hear from them, but we need to listen to all of, all of the light that's coming. We need to be able to sort it out from God's word to decide whether it's light. And so because on December 25th, 2021, we have this conflict, we're going to compare this to this battle. And we know that this is a repeat of history because the battle with Parminder's message already has occurred. Brother Theodore? Yep. I got a um, quote um, um, pertaining to that. It's in reviewing how May 29, 28, 1889. I'll let you read it, but I'm going to give you the okay. so review and Herald. What's so I'm here. What year? No, it's view and Herald, May 28, 1889. Okay, so I got to get to 1889. And it starts, it starts out. It starts yeah, out. Let us go without the camp is the name of, of it. May 28th, 1889, you're saying? Yeah, May, it's Review and how. Yeah, May, I got it here. I have it here. So which paragraph? It starts with, how do you know uh, when you turn away from those who do not seem Okay, it starts with what? How do you know? How do you know? When you turn away from those who do not. Yeah, I don't see that. May 28th, 1889. Where paragraph, it comes from paragraph book, seven. Paragraph seven. In the middle of the paragraph. Oh, that's why. I was looking at the top of the paragraph. Um. I don't have the numbers here. I gotta get the numbers. Here. I don't know. I can't see the the numbers. Anyway, so what? How does the paragraph start? At one time, Jesus sat in Simon's house. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, I'm just going to start reading this paragraph. I don't see where he's talking about. But at one time, Jesus sat in Simon's house, and a woman who was a sinner came in with an alabaster box of very precious ointment, and she broke her box and poured out the ointment on the head of Jesus. Simon criticized Jesus because he did not rebuke the woman. He thought this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touched him, for she is a sinner. Jesus turned to Simon and said, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most. Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, 
thou hast rightly judged. Those who have lived in rebellion against God, when they do not, when they do repent and turn to the Lord, are most fervent in their love. They give better service to God than those who have grown cold in his service, who have for years professed to be his children and loyal to his law. A wonderful change takes place in a truly converted soul. The old imperfections that made them uncourteous and forbidding are not manifested. Uh, they love Jesus and those for whom he died. How do, you, how do you know when you turn away from those who do not seem desirable, but that who are turning away from those, but that you are turning away from those whom Jesus is seeking? Perhaps at the very moment that you turn from them, they are in the greatest need of your tenderness and compassion. There is too much of this critical spirit of standing back in indifference to the welfare of others. We need Christian love. We need to learn meekness and lowliness of heart in the school of Christ. We should be filled with the spirit of the message of warning and mercy, which we are to bear to a dying world. We have only begun to drink of the fountain of life. As we follow on to know the Lord, increasing light will shine upon us and our path will grow brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. So what particular points do you see in here, William, that, that we need to pay attention to? Well, we shouldn't be giving up on people who we think might be wrong or something. That's what I was trying to get across. Yeah. So, um, and always in our conflicts with others, we should be ministering to others, right? You know, when there's a conflict, when we have a disagreement, uh, we shouldn't just be focused upon, you know, who's right, who's wrong. We need to be, we need to be aware that that other person is a person and they're struggling to try to understand truth just as much as you are. But often we make the person the enemy. And that's, and that's not, there's no good purpose in that. I mean, it doesn't help further truth in any way, one for that person, but also for truth itself. I truth placed a quote in the trap or in the chats that are basically in that line, Theodore. Yeah. Oh, there's tons of them, right? I mean, this Heidi and I have been reading first nine. Oh, yeah. Tons of them. Now we're in fifth testimonies. Um, so, so this is what we should do. This one here in the chat, let, let the brethren counsel together and seek the Lord in humble, fervent prayer. Let them treat each other with respect, even at such times when they must differ. Let the spirit of Christ come into your midst, leading, um, leading those who have been wrong to confess their wrongs and be converted. Let the sincere prayer be offered. Give, give me help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. Through God, we shall do valiantly, for he it is that shall tread down our enemies. We need to cultivate a humble, thankful spirit. Through, through the psalmist, the Lord declares, Whoso offereth praise, giveth glor uh, praise, glorify, uh, uh, offereth praise, glorifieth me, and to him that or ordereth his conversation aright, I will show the salvation of God. I am instructed to say to all who claim to be Christians, Guard your words. Let there be less pretense and more confidence in God. Let us learn to praise the Lord much more than we do. Uh, our heart should be should overflow with thankfulness for the truth we possess. And you know how we treat others um, is much more important than the details of our theological discussions. Now, they're important things. I mean, we want to understand truth. We want to understand God's word. But we have to start with Christian principles if we're going to do that. And, you know, we've all made mistakes in this regard. You know, I've made mistakes in this regard. But sometimes I get very focused upon the idea and I can sort of not realize how I'm coming across, how I'm communicating something. Because I get very interested in ideas right so 
something that I'm learning to try to understand, to learn to show sympathy. Because I always have sympathy, but I can't always show it, or I don't always show it. So, um, but I try, right? I try my best in doing that. Even in these situations where I had conflict, I mean, I was trying to be aware of what was happening, but things will always catch me off guard. Like, I'll always be surprised. They just seem to me to come out of nowhere. Um that we have this conflict. And, and that was, you know, the problem on December 25th, 2021, because here I was supporting what Colin was saying, but I was asking a question because I wanted people to understand the issue because people didn't seem from my perspective to understand where Colin was going because they were sort of objecting to things that he was saying. So I was trying to help him, but it wasn't taken that way. Right. It was taken that I was attacking him, which which I was surprised about because I definitely wasn't attacking him or what he was saying. Right. So. Um, but, you know, it's been built up in the message at the present time that, you know, somehow. You know, I'm opposed to call it right. Or I'm opposed to what he's saying, which which I'm not. I just know that there's more there than what. Um, well, Colin, As an observation, bro, I have never seen a conflict between you two. What I've always seen is is um, uh, somebody's not understanding something, and so they they're they're like explaining it. Other people, on the other hand, oftentimes see those things as an attack, and mm -hmm. I, I haven't seen Colin ever you know, respond like it. I always see others respond like that. And I don't know, I don't quite understand that, but, you know, I, I don't see what they, they see. Uh, I try yeah. to look at it uh, objectively as a, as opposed to, you know, uh, well, you can't listen to anything that guy says. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so let's, let's leave that for now. So we say that there's this conflict and we're going to say that it's Tinnak. The Tanakh is marking December 25th, 2021, right? So we know there's conflict, conflict exists in this movement. And we have all these different tribes that are part of this movement. They're all part of it, right? And um, now let's focus at Barak. So... So Andrew just made a comment about Barak. So Barak is a message. And um, Angela says here, Barak was sent on foot into the valleys. That's Judges 5.15. Um, right? So that's one of the verses we're looking at. And she says, see Judges 4, 6, 7, 9, 14. A lesson on humbly trusting God to fortify us in spiritual warfare. On foot... Um, uh, also reminds me of Daniel 12, 4, running to and fro, studying the word, the lines, uh, 10,000 soldiers and judges, 414, like the thousands of angels who accompany Christ when he descends and during the investigative judgment. Okay, so there's some ideas there um, that are interesting. Now, I, so with Barak, one of the things we notice with Barak, so we're just going to look at, at him, at his Hebrew number. So we have a Hebrew number, 1301. And we know that 1301 relates to 1,301, uh, 1,301,000 days, which is 3,562 years. Now, we can divide it into two and we get 1781. 1781 can re represent 178 and 187, which is 365. 187, the number of days from the spring equinox to the autumnal equinox. 178, the number of days from the autumnal equinox to the spring equinox. Now, the 1301, the number, is the 112th prime number. Now, the 112th prime number brings us to um, uh, 2020, or 2012, pardon me. So 2012 is the beginning of this Mayan 777 structure. Now, this Mayan calendar 
date, the date when um, this failed prediction first occurs. That's the world's supposed to end, December 21st, 2012, right? And of course it doesn't, right? It's obviously, but you know, I meet Heidi on that day and that's gonna be 777 days before I turn 100, be, before I turn 52, not 152. Uh, before I turn 52. And 52 times 360 is 18720. And so there's a whole bunch of things in this structure. We, we start to find this structure. And this structure relates to the structure of the Levitical chiasm, right? So we have this structure here, this Levitical chiasm, uh, not here, but in the Song of Deborah and Barak, not in the song, but in the story, right? This becomes this primary uh, line. Now, this 777 days from September 23rd, 2017 to November 9th, 2019 um, is this message that relates to time that counters Parminder's message, right? And, and we're saying that it's the organizational darkness, but... It, it counters what Parmendir is doing in trying to take over this movement, right? And so we see this in the Song of Deborah Brack. We see that this, this history is discussed, but it's going to start in the Song of Deborah Brack on November 9th, 2019, right? So the song, so Deborah Brack covers from September 21 to November 9th or September 23rd, pardon me, 2017 to November 9th, 2019. And then the song of Deborah and Barak is going to show this repeat of history um, from November 9th, 2019 to January 11th, 2023. But now the second part of the song, of, so this is the first part of the song of Deborah and Barak. The second part and is going to relate to the period of time from December 25th, 2021 to whatever date it's pointing to in the future. But that, that's what we're saying. Now, when we look at Barack, so we looked at Deborah. So, okay, I'm, I'm, remember when we looked at Deborah, we had this 1683 as her number. And that was specifically a number that related to 187. 168.3 also relates to 252 because 168 times 3 is 504. You divide it by 2, it's 252. So that's the 504 years from 34 AD to 538. That's where we first see 504. It's also a symbol of the fifth day of the fourth month. And 168 is the number of uh, hours in a week. So if you have 168 times 3 in a week, 21 days, you're going to have 504 hours. That relates to Daniel chapter 10, the 21 days, the three full weeks that he fasts. So all of these different symbols are there in, in Deborah. Now, we know also that when we looked at Asher, he's going to have that symbol of the 1368, right? Uh, but more interesting is Zebulun's where he's going to have this reverse product, which has 1683, uh, or three, what is it? 1683, so it's 1683 in reverse, right? So 3861. And so Zebulun and Naphtali are the ones that are going to join, right, uh, in this battle. Now, um, so there's a number of other interesting numbers. So... This one's a little difficult, so you're going to have to bear with me. Now, we don't have Manasseh mentioned by name, but we do have Makir and Gilead. They're both of the tribe of Manasseh, correct? That's what we concluded. All right. Makir is the son of Manasseh, and, and Gilead is, is from the tribe of Manasseh, right? And now in Manasseh, we have uh, a symbol of 80. So 80 represents what? So 
So it's four score, right? And what's our primary reference for that? It's the priests. And that is where? You remember the story. I can't remember where it is. So I'm trying to find it. Is that the 80 priest that yeah. restrained uh, King Uzziah? Uh, but we have it as 81 because we because added the, the, high we had the high priest there. Right. But there's 80 priests plus the high priest. So 80 and 81 relate to each other, right? Y yes. So, so that's the normal sum of Manasseh. Now we have a product. You know, it's uh, the normal product is 262, 80, 80. So you got 80 double, 262, whatever that means. We know, though, that if we take um, this and we divide it by seven, it's Second Chronicles 26. Uh, you know, I just found it here, too. So, uh, but when we take this product and... Um, and we divide it by seven and divide it by two, we get one, eight, seven, seven, two. So one, eight, seven, and you can see the seven is doubled. So the seven is doubled when we uh, divide it. So if we take seven, we double it, uh, and then we multiply that by one, eight, seven, seven, two. So it's one, eight, seven, two with the seven doubled we get this number, which is the normal product. And, and then we have uh, the reverse sum. The reverse sum is 13, six. So 13 is the number of rebe rebellion, six, the number of man. And then we have the reverse product. And I want you to look at this carefully. Now, I don't think many of you would know what 3291 is. Anybody here knows what 3,291 represents? I'm looking. 3,000 what? 3,291. 3,000. I don't expect anybody to. Nope. Don't have it. So it's the number of days in the prophetic mirror, the 777 prophetic mirror. It goes from the Mayan calendar date, right? December 21st, 2012, to December 25th, 2021. So it's 3,291 days. Could you repeat the, the dates again for me? So if you if we go from the mind calendar, here, I'll, I'll show it to you if I have it. Um, so I'll just share screens here. So here we have it on the bottom chart. You got December 21st, 2012, and you have two periods of 777 days next to each other with my 52nd birthday in the middle. And then that's going to end March 24th, 2017. And then you'll have 183 days to September 23rd, 2017. So this isn't in proportion. And then you have two periods of 777 days you have the one from september 23rd to november 9th 2019 and the one from november 9th 2019 to december 25th 2021 so this is 3291 days this is a prophetic mirror the 3291 day prophetic mirror now uh, the interesting thing about this in the levitical chiasm does anybody know how many days it is from October 13th, 2018 to September 7th, 2019. So that's going to be from when we, we I confirmed the 391 days and a half. And then Jeff is going to wake up on September 7th at Lambert Church and he's going to give his message. How many days later from October 13th? 
it's going to be 329 days. Right? <laughs> right. So that 329, this one has one extra day in there, but there's a reason for it, which I'm not going to go into. Um, but the center of this is 183 days. Right. So this is just what we call six months. Uh, it's going to go uh, from March 24th, 2017 to September. <laughs> and sorry. Uh, yeah. Now, this March 24th date on the biblical calendar is going to be uh, uh, the 25th day of the 12th month. So that's interesting in a symbol. Uh, the center date here is June 22nd to 23rd. Right. So it's the end of June 22nd to the beginning of June 23rd is the center date of this whole chiasm. And so that June 22nd, I can explain it. Actually, you take out of that 329 and one days. So you just remove it. Um, there's a bunch of things that happen here that I've written down, solar eclipse and different things. But this 3291 is a prophetic mirror, right? Now, when we go to um, back to this other chart, we have 3291. Three, that's the first four digits in this product down at the bottom. And then the last four digits are 2064. Now, 2064 is, is um, at the 26th day of the fourth month, right? And we know there's a 2,604 day prophetic mirror. So, so those, those digits relate as well. We also have 352, um, pardon me, I did that one. 352, if you take that 35 and that two, so I could have done it 3291, 352, that, that's the number of days. Um, uh, pardon me, 352. What is 352? I can't remember. Anyway, you've got 35 in the center, and then you have 2064. We'll leave that 352. That does relate to something, but I don't want to get into that right now. Because uh, 352 is a number that has to do with our triangular structure. But anyway, um, so we've got all these symbols here. And, and we can see that this number itself is 2 to the power of 10 times 13 to the power of 3 times 19. Now, the question is, we have all these different tribes. So we have Manasseh. He has these symbols that can relate to this uh, period of time, this prophetic mirror. And then we have Barak, who has... Um, uh, so, so this is Manasseh. So this is the tribe. This is Makir. We're going to deal with um, some of this here. Um, but now we have Barak. And we have this 1,301,000 days. That's going to be from the first day of the first month in 1533 to the first day of the first month in 2030. And this is going to be uh, 3,562 biblical years, right? Now, if we take this number, and I'm going to have to go to another picture. So 3562. So here you can see this chart of the 3,562 years, right? Going all the way from the first day of the first month to the first day of the first month. Now, if we go back from April 5th, 2030, it's going to bring us to July 4th, 2020. And what's the significance of July 4th, 2020? So that's 3,562 days instead of 3,562 years. So it's 1,000 days less, or a thousand, a times 1,000 days less. So 1,000th. It's the end of the 100 days of prayer, right? So we have on March 27th, we have this uh, 100 days of prayer. Did I say 1,000 days of prayer? <laughs> 100 days of prayer. So it's 144,000 minutes. 
from the beginning of March 27th to the end of July 4th, 2020. So if we go from July 4th, 2020, it brings us to April 5th, 2030, as 3,562 days. Now we know also, does July 4th represent the first day of the first month? Didn't we make that application? Yes, we did. And if we count from the first day of the first month to, to the 10th day of the seventh month, we have uh, this period of 187 days, right? So if we count from July 4th, 2020, we get to the beginning of the 10 days of prayer on January 6th, 2021. Right? And that can you repeat that, please? Can you repeat so we, what you just we said? We count 187 days from July 4th, 2020. It brings us to January 6th, 2021, which begins a period of 10 days of prayer. So we have 100 days of prayer, then ending on July 4th, and then we have 187 days, and then we have 10 days of prayer. These are, this is the Adventist church, right? <laughs> and that 10 days of prayer goes from the, the 6th of January to the 16th of January. And the 16th of January is uh, 343 days before December 25th, 2021. It, it, it's also 116 uh, or 611. And we yes. can flip that over again, and that's 911. So we, there's a lot of symbology there. Um, but six, uh, yeah, so we got all these different symbols. Yeah, so it's, um, um, I'm trying to think here. I'm trying to remember all, all of this because uh, I get mixed up sometime. Okay, so uh, Angela asks, is there any significance today? May... Uh, fourth, the second Passover by the Jews, right? So today, oops, I'm, I'm just going to quickly go there just because uh, today is, it's not really today, it's really tomorrow, right? So starting this evening would be the beginning of the second Passover. So I don't know if that's significant or not, but anyway, that's just answering that question. Um, so, so when we look at this, this period of time, this three, five, six, two years, and we see that it's going to relate again to April 5th, 2030, to this, and, and remember that 100 days of prayer, they initiated it because of the pandemic, right? So March 27th, 2020 is going to be, uh, the beginning of the 100 days of prayer, it's also when I get laid off from my job, at least for a month or so. Um, that's when in in Canada, they initiate all their, the shutdown, everything, right? Um, you know, there's probably different dates for different places. But for here, that was for me personally, March 27th, 2020 was that date. And um, so... So we have this um, 100 days of prayer, and it's going to connect here. But it's also going to connect. So, I mean, really what I should do here, even though we have this other places, uh, I don't have this 3,562 3, days anywhere. So we would just put in here March 27th. So we put in 100 days there. Because this then gives us an understanding about Barak is why we're doing this. Because we know this message of Barak is a message related to chronology, but for some very specific things about chronology. 
And then we're going to have Hundred and eighty seven days here. And then we're going to have ten, ten days, so but we don't really need that. Uh, this is making sense to people, like not just the lines themselves, but why, why we see this as significant. Well, it's 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 going to take a little handling in order to make it uh, understandable for me. You know, I mean, I just I get all these dates and all that other stuff. Making sense of it all is kind of hard until I start handling it. Once I start handling it, it's a different story. I start to remember it better. And right. this is just these are just memory aids for me. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, the other thing that uh, I'm able to do, especially since you sent me a copy of your um, PDF, I mean, your uh, uh, PowerPoint okay. presentations a, a year ago, which I, I, I don't mean to sound rude, but I, I need another one of those to keep up to date. Because what I do is I use these numbers and stuff and I search through them. Uh, yeah. and, and I come up with these different um, uh charts that you have put up and so i now then now i can start to see what exactly you're talking about mm -hmm. yeah so but whether we can remember all this or not is we can what we want to look at here dealing with barack because he's going to give us this 3562 years right from his the number of his hebrew number for his name the definition of his name and uh, but it's also going to connect us to this history of the pandemic so so with deborah and barack remember deborah and barack are in that history of not just the song of deborah and barack our history but they're in that history in the past right and that history in the past as we saw there was the, um, so just go back here, right? We have Deborah and Barak. This is going to be part of this prophetic mirror, right? This 3291 prophetic mirror. They're going to be this latter part of it from September 27th to November 9th, right? And and then they're going to be involved in this history here, dealing with the prophetic mirror. And then we're going to have them involved in um, this history. Now, again, from the end of the prophetic mirror to April 5th, 2030, as a symbolic date. But we also know that this period of darkness here that we have this is a period of darkness that we we didn't define the beginning of it right we we just we just said this is a period of darkness chapter 5 verse 14 to 18 is going to tell us about that period of darkness all the way up to the time of the end right now we know that Barak ties us back, so this would be in the period of darkness for this line, because we need to understand what this line is, what, what the darkness is specifically, and what the light is. Because in order for us to construct the rest of the line, we have the time of the end, and we, have, we say that this is describing a period of darkness, but we need to know what that is specifically. And... And then we can construct the line. Because then we will know what events, because we need to know what that message is on December 25th, 2021, because it's light addressing the darkness. And there's going to be an increase of knowledge. And then we're going to have this formalization and empowerment. Right? 
of that first message. So the question is, if we can look at Barak himself, because Barak, that number, uh, ties us to, um, because and because we're analyzing it here at this point, right? This is where we're analyzing. We're analyzing. We looked at the number before, but we're really analyzing it now. And it's going to bring us, I believe, the symbol is uh, the 3562 days, right? The three three five six two days or years, whatever you want to call them, they're both. Um, but that means that this is pointing us to April fifth, twenty thirty. So, so the first thing I would say here is that I need to put April fifth, twenty thirty here, because at least that's where I think this line is leading us to. whatever this symbolic date represents, that's going to be the third angel arriving. Now, it could be wrong. Maybe it's some other date in 2030, but I'm going to put that there, okay? Because the story of Barak leads us to there. And, it, and it's specifically this battle at Tanakh. So if we look again at these verses... Now, I always want to go through this much faster than we do, but I know you guys don't mind. At least I hope not. No, <laughs> sir. It it helps me get grounded. I don't care how long it takes. I just want it to, I just want to be able to understand. Yeah. So we're taking 518, which is going to end basically that period of darkness. And then it says the kings came and fought, then fought the kings of Canaan in Tanakh by the waters of Megiddo. They took no gain of money. Now, I was saying we can put that as the first angel arriving. We might put it as the first angel formalized or something. I don't know. And I don't know how far when we go through chapter five um, here, where we're going to, what, what we're going to end up. Are we going to actually end up finishing all the way to 31? Or are we going to find that we have another story that's also a line? I don't know. Or is that story just a zoom in? But we're saying that this is a zoom in to, um, the date in uh, the story oops, just put the wrong thing here, that, that this whole Judges 1431 is a zoom into, in the song of Deborah and Barak, a close of probation. That is, it's the fourth angel arriving. That's what we're saying. So this is talking about a close of probation within this movement. Right, not the close of close of probation at the end of the world. So it's a zoom into that way, Mark. And um, so Zebulun and Naphtali, Naphtali, they were the people that jeopardied their lives unto the death in the high places of the field. Right, and the kings came and fought. Then fought the kings of Canaan in Tanakh by the waters of Megiddo. They took no gain of money. They fought from heaven. The stars in their courses fought against Sisera. So we're saying the stars in their courses is representing the chronology. Right? But it's saying they're fought against Sisera. But in this history, Sisera has already been defeated. Right? He was defeated on November 9th. But we're saying that at the end of December, at the end of the 777 structure, we still have Sisera in existence, and he has to be defeated again, right? Because this is a repeat of history. Right, a reiteration. Right. So it's, it's, it's obviously not Parminder. I mean, he's gone and out of the way. But we're saying it's a message of Parminder, because that's what Sisera is, was the message of Parminder. It's a and message. That, and that it still exists within the movement. And so we have this conflict on December 25th, 2021. Now, we've identified the messages of Parminder, of Cicero. It relates to a papal spirit, right? It relates to uh, wrong methods of study. 
that is dependence upon man. What else does Sisera represent as a message? Just think about the things that were wrong with Parminder's message and his attitude, his spirit. Yeah, that's like a major thing is the attitude. Right. Somebody else said something. Because what needs to be defeated? I mean, that's really the question in this movement. What is it that's left now? The I mean, attitude. Okay, but yeah, so what is that? It's that it's that inability to uh, listen to the spirit of prophecies, advice on uh, brotherly love. Okay, so... Yeah, so it's a spirit of it's a, it's a spirit of papalism. Okay, so there's papalism. So one is we know it's about secret, right? There's <laughs> things were done in secret. Cicero, Correct. Reminder, is, they're done in secret. Is this also not the spirit of self exaltation? Okay, so there's a spirit of self exaltation. There's envy. There's pride. There's all these characteristics that we know exist in the movement because they exist in us. We're human beings. Uh, those things exist. And those things need to be defeated. Now, um, so Deborah and Barack attack that message at the beginning, right? So that's because that's what we're studying is Deborah and Barack. We're still studying the formalization of the first message in the line of the judges. Right. We're we're in the line of the judges. We're still judging Deborah or, or studying Deborah and Barack. And that is a line that goes from October 13th, 2018 to September 9th, 2019, a period of 329 days. Observation. Right? Yeah. How did Cicero die? Well, he's going to get a nail put through his head. OK, so uh, which leads me to this. The the woman walk softly walked softly up to him kind of snuck in up on him and then drove that nail which is um basically the end of the message through his head so stealth must be observed um uh, when you're approaching this message um tread lightly um don't wake anybody up too much. <laughs> I don't. Know somebody's going to. Somebody's yeah. going to see it. It's that's that's going to be an end of it. Um, the end is going to be that that idea is going to be um, removed from us, one way or another. Okay. Yeah. So so I agree with you. Partly there. I mean, I, I think that this um, approach that she has um, is that, I mean, she's first not aware of who Sisera is, right? That's what we concluded. Yes. And did, didn't we've had that same problem. Right. Right. But with, with the message of Parminder, it's hard to discern. Correct. Now, her approach, you know, because when you deal with JL here, because um, it says, as you said, she went softly un unto him. Now, to me, this refers to a type of meekness. That was my point. Yeah. So, yeah. So th there's, there's a meekness that's a approached. Now, here, of course, this word says secrecy mystery secrecy secretly mystery enchantment so that's kind of you know what we say that that Cicero is is he's secret right i mean he does all these things in secret 
Um, so the JL approaches him with this hammer. Now that's uh, for the word hammer there is uh, four, seven, one, eight. That's four times seven, 18, right? July 18, right? So we, we've seen that before. In her hand, that's the 327. But when we talk about the secret here in, in, in this story, um, this isn't about secrecy in the sense of, you know, um, like Parminder was having these secret meetings and so forth. Um, that there is a, well, they use the word mystery and also enchantment. So that's, that's what this word means. Um, so how would we relate this then to the message of July 18, 2020? In a positive way, right? So we're not going to say it's enchantment. Now, it is true that Parminder, well, Tess more specifically, accused me of being um, uh, uh, Simon Magus, right? But we saw there that the symbols of Simon Magnus actually point to, to truth. So the fact they accused me of this. Um, so here is a good uh, comment by Angela. To those who refuse to be alerted by God's word, he appears stealthily and surprises them as a thief would, right? So that's going to be uh, for those that Christ's coming comes as a thief in the night. And I think that's sort of more what I would understand from this, this word of softly. Thank you, Angela. Yeah, thanks. Now, she's going to smote him with a nail in his temples, and we address the nail. This nail in a shirt place, uh, there's, there's lots to that. Um, so this is going to be the death of Sisera in chapter 4. Now, in chapter five, we're saying that this is a repeat of history, that this death of Sisera is something that happens later in the movement because Sisera still exists. And, and there are symbols that are going to tell us this. Now, we looked a lot about JL and Heber and, and all these different things. So we're going to get to there. But right now, where we are actually in, in this is uh, we have the he fought from heaven, they fought from heaven, right? The stars in their courses fought against Sisera. So we're saying the stars in their courses, of course the stars are the stars in the sky and, um, and their courses is their thoroughfare, specifically a viaduct, a staircase, a causeway, a course, a highway, a path, a terrace. So, whether literally or figuratively, but we know that this is what we have, in studying chronology, we are looking at the stars, because they're, the sun and the moon and the stars dictate time. It's our original timepiece. Yeah. Now, the stars themselves, we know it's not astrology, where we're, you know, trying to predict the future and can control God. Right? That's what astrology is. But we're using the stars, the sun and the moon and the stars, to represent, and the stars represent the seasons as well. Because where the sun is, whichever constellation it is, tells you what the season of the year is. Um, so we have these, the sun and the moon and the stars all work together to be this timepiece. But what's going to defeat uh Cicero is this uh the stars that is the heaven that is god right and and the stars in their courses god is going to guide the direction against this message of Cicero that still exists within the movement are you going to say something william what does the uh, name of Cicero mean um well, it says of uncertain der derivation, but what we have here is battle array. 
So that's what Brown Drivers Briggs tells us, and that's how we've taken it. So Cicero, he's a general. Obviously, he's a fighter, and that's what his name means, it is the battle array. Um, um, but this is a battle, right, that goes on. And part of the problem, I think, with Cicero is this idea of wanting to be in a battle. I mean, this is the thing that I find the most frustrating is none of us want to be in a battle with each other. We want to be studying together, right? We want to know what is true. That's, that's my general feeling. And, and, I, and I don't mean this, you know, as a criticism of people's characters, because I don't know people personally what their motives are. But I do know that there are individuals that like to have battles, and why do people want to have battles? Why do they want to have conflict? Does anybody know from a psychological point of view? Well, it's it's more of a natural, it's more of a natural thing and, and endorphin related. Well, I don't know. Okay, my understanding is it is that people, instead of dealing with things in themselves. If they have a conflict with others, they have someone else to blame other than themselves. Okay, and we can use that as well. <laughs> simple, it's a simple way of deflecting from things in yourself. So right. look at the problems are in the church or the problems are in the Catholic church or the problems are something outside of us. Since we're in a conflict with what is bad, we must be good, Right. So it, 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 avoid, it helps us avoid looking at the things in ourselves that need to be changed. And so if we're, some people want to continue to have conflict, and I've seen this, uh, no matter what you try to do to resolve a conflict, they want that con conflict to continue because it's self-justifying, right? That's what a conflict can do. They can justify themselves because of that conflict. It's the way we've been trained up through society. Well, I think it's our human nature. The human nature is... Well, that too. That too. Men love, men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. But so it's practiced universally, you know, unless you, unless you take stock of it and, and attempt to change it. Yeah. So, so we know that... We, we're not to be in, in conflict with our brethren, even if we differ, that we need to go to them and we need to study together, and pray together to find out what is truth. And so I can't really know about other people particularly. All I can know is that in general, uh, this goes against our nature. We like to have a battle. And so this battle that's going on uh, by the waters of Megiddo. Now, um, now we know this Megiddo relates to Armageddon, right? Yes. Now, Armageddon means the mountain of Megiddo. But Correct. Megiddo is actually a valley, right? But here it's going to talk about the waters of Megiddo. And, and so what is this battle about? The water. <laughs> okay. Well, they they have this battle over the waters. Now, the waters can represent people, so maybe that's what's represented here, right? Um, but we know that this is a battle fought within the movement. That's the main thing that we can see here. But they're fighting against uh, the message of Deborah and Barak. Well, what Deborah and Barak are fighting against the message of the kings of Canaan, right? And so the kings of Canaan represent these messages, right, connected to Sisera's message, to Jabin, king of Canaan, and Sisera, his general, this message. And it's going to be the stars in their courses, heaven, that's going to defeat them. And it's going to be uh, that the river Kaishan sweeps them away, the ancient river, the river Kaishan. 
O my soul, thou hast trodden down strength. So, so in order for, for us to understand this story, um, we have strength that needs to be defeated. And that strength is our human nature. Now, because people have asked me for a long time about chronology, you know, what is the use of it? Why do you think it's important? Now, usually because they don't think it's important and they think that I could have no good reason to study chronology. I need to study, you know, the gospel or I need to study, you know, the third angel's message or something else. Um, but to me, when I look at these stories, following what God has said, to draw things on a line from here to there in order, right, to organize the stories of the Bible chronologically. It's not just so that we can see a bunch of interesting little uh, facts, so that we can have some sensational little coincidences that we put together and say, isn't this amazing, right? That's not why we do it. Why do we do it? What does it show us? Chronology, the connections well, um, from the prophecies. Shows, right, but it shows us God's in control. Yes, and, absolutely. <laughs> and, he's, and he's not just in control of the, the major events throughout the world. He's also in control of the events in our lives. Yes. And, and we, we come to a, a cross as we look through these lines personally, that is, we are given light that has us make decisions, and we can continue to follow that light or not. And, and the thing is, it's all through the Bible. I mean, one of the questions I ask people who are skeptics, they said, well, why is there so much of it in the Bible? Why is the Bible giving us all of these chronological details? I mean, why is Ezekiel telling us what the dates are uh, that he's having his visions if they're not important, right? Why, is he, why do we have all these time prophecies? And, and, and people say, well, we don't understand them. Well, you should. You know, we're at the end of the world, and you're saying you can't tell me uh, where Ezekiel 4, verse 4 to 6 is talking about, where the 409. 90 days, what they represent and where they start and where they end and where the 40 days begin and end. And if you can't tell me that, and, and I can show you it, and you're going to say, well, it's not important. Well, you're just rejecting light, right? I mean, there's no other way to explain it. So, so these characteristics that we see in this story. So we have this Kaishan. We know Kaishan, the river Kaishan is going to sweep them away. It's this ancient river. It's also the stars in their courses. Right? Now this Kaishan means winding. But this Kaishan in this context is a good thing, right? Because it's going to sweep them away. Yes. In a certain sense. Yeah. Jesus was scornful towards them who didn't recognize the signs of the times, right? So we need to know the signs of the times. And then were the horse hooves broken by the means of prancings and the prancings of the mighty ones. Now, one of the things when we think about horse hooves, at least when I think about them, I think about patterns, rhythmic patterns, right? I'm sorry, that was horses or courses? Horse hooves. The horse hooves. Oh, okay. You see broken, what? Then were the horse hooves broken by the means of prancings. So when I think of that, I think about the patterns of horse hooves, the gallop or the prancings. Right. Yeah, and, yeah. So, like in old movies, every time you'd hear the horses, they all had three legs. I don't know if anybody noticed that. 
when they go cluck, 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 right? They make that sort of rhythm. Right. Which isn't like a horse hoof pattern at all. But anyway, <laughs> that's how they imitated in, in three instead of four. But um, but these prancing, prancings or gallopings, they're the patterns of the horse hooves. Right? Does that make sense to people? Yes. Yes, it does to me. Yeah. Now, when it says they're broken, um, the word there, halam, means to strike down by implication to hammer, stamp, conquer, disband, beat down, break down, overcome, smite with the hammer. So these ho horse hooves, these patterns, um, are broken down, right? So what? So that, that that's the hammer in her hand. Yeah. You know, we got prancings is doubled. Prancings, by the means of the prancings, the prancings of their mighty ones. Um, and we have the doubling. Yeah, and there uh, the word uh, mighty ones is abir, which means angel, bull, chiefest, mighty one, stout, stout-hearted, strong, valiant, um, uh, of men, of angels, of animals metaphorically of enemies, of princes, uh, obstinate. That's figuratively, it means obstinate. Now, in this message of Sisera, is there patterns? Did, did Tess and Parminder use patterns in their November 9th, 2019 prediction? Um, not being completely involved with it, I, I seem to recall us talking about it, and there seemed to be a pattern. Yeah, so that she used these spans of 490 years and half of 490 years and different things, 391 and right, half, all these different symbols. She put them on a line. She had them all end on on 2019, and then she took some of those years and looked at the dates where there was November 9th. And right, then everybody then concluded, she's saying November 9th, 2019 is the close of probation, right? That was concluded on, on uh, October 3rd, 2018, when she did the Which first. turned out to be the witness against them. Well, yes. So it's, it's going to end up backfiring on them, right? And so that happened with Parminder's message. So we can say, we can apply that to these uh, the horse hooves of the enemy, they're going to be broken by the means of the prancings of the prancings of the mighty ones. Now, um, now I don't know if by means of is a very good translation there um, because it's just uh, the word uh, from the prancings, the prancings of their mighty ones. Prancing means strut. Yeah, so it's the gallop. The, here in Hebrew, it just means... The pattern of of the horse's hooves when they when they move, right? You've um, watched horses prance, and what does it look like to you? Yeah, but this isn't really prancings. Prancings is not a good translation, is what I'm trying okay. to say. Okay. It, it because we use the word prance now in a different way than it used to be used when the King James was translated. It just means Correct. in the true. different strides of the horses, right? That can be dashing. Yeah rushing a galloping right so, so walking it's sideways patterns, yeah it's the patterns of the horse hooves that's what it's talking about and right. these patterns were uh broken where they were struck down they were stopped yeah um it could be the prancings of the tramplings but here it's not so much tramplings it's more the patterns of the gallops of uh, the horses different strides right so and and of these mighty ones or of and these can be uh negative very negative ones these mighty ones right as mighty ones can be referred to mighty or valiant of men angels animals but also of enemies of princes 
and also refer to obstinate, right? So those that are mighty in their own eyes are stubborn or persistent, right? Um, so, so that's what we have here in that that is being defeated. So I'm just saying that I think this refers to the different patterns. Now we have patterns again in the movement, right? We have all these dates being used for predictions. We see the patterns. So we've seen Collins chart. And, and as I've said before, the dates are correct. But what he's not doing is putting them on a line and it's not part of an overall structure that we can recognize. That is, the conclusions that he's going to draw from the dates and the patterns that he sees are going to be the wrong conclusions. Because without a line and the biblical story to illustrate that line, we have no way to interpret those, those patterns. Right? Yeah, we're just making stuff up as we go at that point. Right. This is what I see the Protestants do all the time with dates and patterns. You saw yeah, it's it with, more arbitrary than anything. Yeah, you saw it with the, you know, the patterns dealing with the stock market and the seven year cycle. Right. Back a number of years ago, people were talking all about what well, I can't remember the word they used, but, uh, you know, the sabbatical cycle. And yes, you know, we have a stock market crash in 2015 because we had one in 2008 and and, and just different things like that. And, you, you, and the blood moon stuff, you know, all this nonsense, right? I, I've always heard it as cycles of eight, eight as well. Yeah, but, but the point is, these are patterns and they do exist. But I have no way to interpret their significance without an understanding of the lines. Right. I need, have, I need to have a period of darkness. I need to have a time of the end. I need a formalization and empowerment. I need a second message formalization empowerment and i need the arrival of the third and i need this to be from the bible a story clearly marked out i can't just make up a story right we need the bible to guide us right? we need to know what the darkness is what the light is and they need to be marked on specific events that are meaningful tied with the symbols of scripture otherwise we're just guessing and I hate guessing uh, me too it, it causes accidents which can kill you yeah okay yes I'm a very cautious person there's a reason why I've never broken a bone um, now we're going to look at Judges 20, uh, 523 this would be the last one we probably won't finish this one now it says Curse ye morotes, said the angel of the Lord. Curse ye bitterly. So that's just curse, curse, right? Um, the inhabitants thereof, because they came not to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty, right? So the mighty here is different than the mighty ones, right, in verse 22. This word here is uh, gibor, where the other one was uh, 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 be a beer, right? Um, so this one's one from 1396, gabar, to be strong by implication, prevail, act insolently, exceed, confirm, be great, be mighty, prevail, etc. cetera. Um, so, um, so there's a mighty, that that um, that Marotes did not come to to help in this fight to help the Lord or to the help of the Lord to the help of the Lord against the mighty, right? So he didn't come to help the Lord against these this enemy. So who is Marotes? We have this word, which means refuge, right? It's actually morose, so it's uh, morose, and it's only mentioned in jo Judges 5.23, so morose. Uh, mem, resh, vav. And...
So it's got a zine at the end, zine, Z. Okay, so 523. What does it translate out to? Uh, the word means- it, Yes. It means refuge. Refuge, not refuse. Yeah, refuge. Like trash, not trash, but a place to, of, yeah. of, okay. Yeah, with a G, refuge. Sorry, my ears are not as good as they used to be. Okay, so Ellen White has a quick fair bit to say about uh, this person, even though it's only mentioned in one verse of the Bible. So. Any highlights, or shall we search these things? Yeah, I'm no, no, I'm, good. I'm going there. Could it be referring to Isaiah 28, 15, about the refuge of lies? Yeah, okay. So Morose is mentioned 54 times in the Spirit of Prophecy, fifth day, the fourth month. Um, but Ellen White says, there is a class represented by Morose. The missionary spirit has never taken hold of their souls. The calls of foreign missions have not stirred them to action, right? Um, so she compares this to thou wicked and slothful servant. Um, that declaration is made upon them. So this is sloth. Um, so it says, As said the judge, all will be justified by their faith and judged by their works. How vividly then appeared their neglect and how wise the arrangement of God in giving to every man a work to do to promote the cause and save his fellow men. Each was to demonstrate a living faith in his family and in his neighborhood by showing kindness to the poor, sympathizing with the afflicted, engaging in missionary labor and by aiding the cause of God with his means. But like Morose, the curse of God rested upon them for what they had not done. They had loved that work which would bring the greatest profit in this life and opposite their names in the ledger, devoted to good works, there was a mournful blank. Um, um, you will never be ministers after the gospel order till you show a decided interest in medical missionary work, the gospel of healing and blessing and strengthening. Come up to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty powers of darkness that it be not said of you, curse ye morose, curse ye bitterly the inhabitants thereof, because they came not to the help of the Lord. Um, so all the people who lived in morose, they're not going, they're the wicked and slothful servant, right? So you're just going to see a lot of similar statements here. What had morose done? Nothing. This was their sin. The man with a selfish, narrow mind is responsible for his niggardliness by those who have kindly affections, generous impulses, and love for souls are laid under weighty responsibilities. So people will bring advantage to themselves, but not to others. Now, of course, Ellen White's often talking about, you know, means and so forth. But I think in this context, one of the things we can see is that um, there's a work that needs to be done. We need support in that work. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking here about actual verbal support and action. You know, so one of the things that, that I see is that there are a class of people who never make a stand, who never come to the help of those that they agree with because it it's going to inconvenience them. Right. So when we've had studies, we've had a lot of people speak out against things that were being presented, but those that agreed didn't give their vocal support and i find that disappointing that is there will be a meeting and somebody may write me an email and say how much they supported me but they never gave that message publicly 
right? I'm not saying that, you know, I'm the one that has to be supported all the time, but I'm just saying if there is somebody who's under fire and we don't support them when we agree with them, we don't make a stand with them, uh, we are like morose, right? That's what it appears to me to be. We need to make our voices heard when we see when we see people being mistreated. I mean, personally, when Colin was presenting on December 25th, 2021, I saw him under attack. And I came to his support. That's the way I perceived it. People were questioning and and, and some of their questions showed a lack of understanding of what he was talking about. And so I said, here is something that Colin has seen. We should examine it, right? It's truth there. But instead, you know, people saw it as an attack. But the point is, when somebody's presenting truth, we need to stand up and support them. Especially when they're they're being shot down. Somebody, That's why they sent them out two by two, right? Well, that's one of the reasons, yes. I mean, we need the support of each other. Yeah, we know there's many reasons, but that's just one of them. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's nothing worse when you're you're under fire and somebody, I'm with you, brother, but, but they're not. <laughs> you know, you're out there taking taking fire in no man's land. And well, that's that's our natural ability to try to seek cover for ourselves. Right. But the thing is, truth is not benefited by that. Um, so when, that's when, what differentiates a hero from a, a from a not a hero. Yeah, anyway, we'll come back to Moreau's um, on Sunday because we want to look at this in a bit more detail and what where we're going to put this on a line. Um, but anyways, because we went a bit over time. So anyway, thanks everyone for the study today. Um, Thank you, before, Theodore. Before we close, let's have a word of prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, uh, we're so grateful for the study. And we know that uh, we're moving slowly, but we're seeing things more clearly. And I, I pray for each person that they can spend the time personally to study these things, to understand them. And um, we ask, Lord, that... Um, Christ can be manifest in our life, that we can behold him and that others can see that we have been with Christ. We pray that we can not be like morose, that we can stand for those with those that are fighting the enemy, that we can support one another and that you can use us in this work in the closing scenes of earth's history. Be with each person now. Be with us in our studies tomorrow evening and Sabbath morning. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.